First is Torah, Nebu, Ketibu. That means Torah means the five books, the laws. Nebu, that means the Psalms, the Proverbs, all things. Ketibu means it's a prophets. Three, three are very important. One given by Moses directly, the five books, Pentateuch, what we have. Beginning of the Old Testament, then later comes King David's Psalms, Solomon's and Proverbs, then prophets. Prophets are the messengers of God. So what this rabbis, when they come to that synagogue, they have to explain, they have to break the word of God, whatever God has spoken to the prophets. And Jesus himself calls those attenders, he says, bring the scroll of prophet Isaiah. He opens up prophet Isaiah chapter 61, he reads out what we have, because of Luke chapter 4, 14, speaks about this. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, he has called me to anoint and to bring and give good news to the poor. How beautiful it is, he keeps on going one by one. And there in prophet Isaiah, further it goes, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, he anointed me to bring good news and he has called me to break free all those who are slaves and bonded laborers and to give freedom for all those who are possessed and all those things are coming. Further one more step comes in prophet Isaiah says, a liberation and victory to Israelites for the Jewish people. And a jubilee year you have liberation for Israelites, he'll destroy the Messiah when he comes. But here Jesus never uses that word. Jesus stops only the four phrases. Says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He anointed me good news. Bring good news. Liberty to all those who bonded labors. Jesus never brings a victory there. He never speaks about a jubilee year, a victory over all the enemies. No. Jesus stops there. They are only shocking for this people. When the Messiah comes, he has to go further. But this Messiah, whatever the people perceive is not so, is a Messiah with a peace. Is a Messiah with a love. Is a Messiah not to kill, rather to be get killed. This Messiah comes not to get served, rather to serve. That's the beauty of this Messiah. We need to understand the concept of Jesus. To be a Christian is not so easy. To be a Christian is not so easy. Don't think we all are called ourselves are Christians. We are not Christians. We are not Christians. We are not Catholic. If you are not holding on to the value of Jesus and today's first reading and Jesus' gospel, if we are not holding on the values of whatever Jesus taught us, then we are not Catholics, we are not Christians. That's what I said. But today, the great example we need to know, St. Anthony. St. Anthony is a great model. After Mother Mary, throughout the universe, after Mother Mary, throughout the universe, it is only St. Anthony has got the popularity and the famous after our beloved mother. That sort of thing, I know it's by accident. Yesterday we had the Feast of Immaculate Heart of Conception. And before that, the Sacred Heart of Jesus. That's why I said, this time we are privileged people. Continuity of God's, the Divine Savior, the Sacred Heart of Jesus, the Master. And after that, His own Mother, most Sacred Heart Mother. It's over here. And today we have the same devotee of the Sacred Heart, devotee of Blessed Mother, St. Anthony, feast we are celebrating. The continuity you see, after Jesus is the Lord God Savior, as I said, after Jesus, the second place was taken in the whole universe. I'm not speaking about the Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Forget. If I speak about Jesus, the Triune God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, there's no any separation. When I speak about God, it's a Jesus. When I speak about the Heavenly Father, it's Jesus. When I speak of the Holy Spirit, it's about Jesus. But Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. And Jesus is the most. And after Jesus, the second place is Mother Mary. And after Mother Mary, we have, we have devoted and we are so blessed people, St. Anthony. And St. Anthony remains a great model Christian, great model Catholic priest, a holy priest. Really hold on to the values of Jesus without any sin. He never spoke any lie. We know very well, even still, his tongue is existing. Because he lived without any kind of guile. So that is what today we need to know the quality of Jesus, the values of Jesus we need to adopt. We need to hold on to that. Today St. Paul speaks about the second reading. So beautifully he calls all, whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please the Lord. Are we any time trying to please the Lord? We always try to please ourselves, right? Stand in front of the mirror. I want to please. I want to please my heart. My face is beautiful. My body is excellent. We have a good shape. 
all these things. We try to please, right? Before marriage, we want to try to please some stupid fellow and somebody. Yeah, always we know that. We want to please somebody. But later you get disappointed. How much I did for this guy? What's happening? How much I did for this lady? What's happening? The pleasing somebody were not worth for it. But yet, this is the way and the plan of God. But every any time we started pleasing God, St. Paul speaks second reading. We need to please God, whether internal, external, whatever. Start pleasing God, God will give beautiful life for us. And secondly, we know very well, always repeat Gospel of Matthew, who speaks about this. Try to please your God. Try to please the kingdom of God. That's everything added unto you. That is what the value of the life of St. Anthony. My sisters and brothers, today we need to know very well and about the gospel. We see Gospel of Mark speaks about this beautiful word, the mustard seed. It brings on the mustard seed. The value of mustard seed, we all know, is a tiny seed, small as all the seed, but yet it is a bigger shrub it becomes when it grows. It can give shelter to so many trees, birds, a lot of creatures can have in this. Today, that is what we have been called to be a good Christian, to be a good Catholic. We need to become a shelter for others, love for others, pleasing God, not human being, pleasing not oneself, pleasing God. St. Paul speaks about again in Romans, he says that our life doesn't belong to us, our life belongs to God. Whether you live or whether you die, do it for greater glory of God. Whether you speak or don't speak, whether you grow, don't grow, everything be for the greater glory of God. That is what St. Anthony did. It is not just a cooked up story about St. Anthony. You know very well. It's a beautiful story. The entire story I engraved, I put in that shrine. You see, beautiful story about St. Anthony. Each and every pictures, the images in the shrine, you see, it will give the miracles that he worked. That's what I took time in making that particular pictures. And everything, all the windows have got one one images. One one image speaks about the miracle that is working. Nothing is impossible to God. Through the intercession of St. Anthony is so powerful, it works for us, my sisters and brothers. Today we are so blessed to be in the presence of God with the help and intercession, with the prayer and physical presence of St. Anthony that we are celebrating today is feast. You know what is feast? For all the saints, except except our beloved mother and John the Evangelist. We don't celebrate the birthday. Forget. These two saints, Mother Mary, apart from Jesus, apart from his nativity, it's Mother Mary nativity, September 8th. And also we have nativity of John the Baptist. These are the true remnant of Israelites. So for them, God has given the Holy Mother privilege. Rest everyone the martyrdom or the death date. <coughs> the second birth, the heavenly birth, St. Anthony, he died on this 13th of this June. He had the birth in heaven. That's why we celebrate this feast. So my dear sisters and brothers, as we celebrate this feast, let's remember each and every brother sisters who asked us to pray. Because St. Anthony always stands for intercession. St. Anthony always stands for helping, praying. Does anybody who's there who have prayed to St. Anthony, your prayers are not answered? No. St. Anthony makes sure that you get something. I myself a living witness for you because I am holding the name of St. Anthony. I didn't agree, I didn't will, it is not my plan, it is God's plan. When I was born, my parents also baptized in the name of St. Anthony. And it is God's blessing today I have to be my first parish in St. Anthony's church. I didn't ask for it, my own Archbishop, you put me over here. Because we always take him as our own father. Once we become a priest, Bishop becomes a father for us. The first father for me who just baptized me in the name of St. Anthony. The second father is maybe Archbishop. He made me to be a first parish priest of the first parish of the St. Anthony. This is all the plan of God. That's how we see the beautiful. Whenever you go to the shrine, my dear sisters and brothers, just go and see that images is there. Each and every image is what we have portrayed and put as a painting, as a print. It speaks about the miracles that he works. And looking at that, please pray. The same miracles and Anthony will work in your life. That's the reason we put there. But looking at that, we call upon that miracle. You climb that miracle. You climb that miracle. St. Anthony, you said, you have done this. You have done to that family. There was a lady without a child. For her, you prayed. There was a death in that family. You prayed for them. You prayed for that. That sickness was there. You received. Look at that. You had to climb the promise. 
That's what the technique of a Christian Catholic Church appraises. That is what when you go for retreat also, they teach us how we need to pray, claim the promise, read the Bible, read the whatever, claim the promise. You have done this, do to me. So today, my dear sisters and brothers, as we celebrate the feast of Saint Anthony, we all belong to the family of Saint Anthony, and let us pray and also ask the help of Saint Anthony to bless, bless our families, bless the things ahead to come in our life in our future. Amen. That through the intercession of Saint Anthony, they will experience in their body the healing touch of the risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those. Who, have, who may have lost something significant, be it a job, good health, relationship, or loved one. In a similar way, the temple was entered, bidding the chalice, once more giving thanks, and giving the sign of the sea. Take this, all of you, and wait for it. But this is a chalice of my blood, and rather than you, I need to make a which will be for us for you and for many, with the means of sins. Jesus, in the memory of God. The mystery of the day. Deliver us from evil. 
deliver us, Lord. We pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as a way the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, because it is and peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but the faith of your church. Graciously grant our peace and unity in the body of the world. Will we pray forever and ever? Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
We trust fully and confidently in our soul of faith and our destiny. That God has accepted the instruments, giving us hope and peace, praying for us and our enemy, so that we may be able to go to the Lord's words and to see us in the words of Christ our God. That's all the ways our prayers and patience, our parents, our brothers and sisters,
Yeah.